Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Guman Singh. In our top story, Governor Kenneth Mapp held a press conference earlier today. Has Stephanie Brown with more. The National Guard and the Virgin Islands Territorial Emergency Management Agency, also known as VITIMA, will be conducting a massive military exercise to stimulate a real-world natural disaster to improve collaboration efforts that help with emergency preparation and coordination response. Vigilant Guard is a national-level, full-scale disaster exercise sponsored by the U.S. Northern Command, generally referred to as NORTHCOM. The military exercises are put on four times a year in various U.S. states. This year, the United States Virgin Islands, Georgia, California, and New Mexico are the four participating districts. The exercise scenario that the people of the Virgin Islands will witness May 15 to the 19th will be a major earthquake, a 7.5 magnitude earthquake, which will generate a tsunami. Last year, Hurricane Matthew brought widespread destruction to parts of Haiti, Cuba, and the Dominican Republic. And the hurricane also approached several states that declared state of emergency. Luckily, the Virgin Islands did not meet the wrath of the tropical cyclones, but the director of ITEMA cautioned residents at the press conference. Uh, before I begin, I'd like to inform the community that this is National Hurricane Preparedness Week. And despite early forecasts for a below average season, I'm encouraging everyone to get prepared. The adjutant general of the Virgin Islands National Guard informed that the Vigilant Guard's response exercise is an important effort for the region that is taken seriously to improve and cement techniques. The Virgin Islands National Guard has been preparing for Vigilant Guard since 2015. Every year, we participate in some exercise that evaluates our level of readiness in performing National Guard domestic operations, but never in a national level exercise of this magnitude. For News 2, I'm Stephanie Shalana Brown. In other news, just a reminder, the governor of the VI, Governor Mapp, has called the 32nd legislature into a special session to consider seven proposed bills, which he says immediate action is necessary. In a letter of transmittal to Senate President Myron Jackson, the governor enclosed for consideration the six bills that affect the Department of Education to the VI horse racing industry. Governor Mapp is also requesting an appropriation to $3 million to address the uh, sewer repairs and line replacement at the one at Fluey Hospital. We'll turn into crime reports. The 911 emergency call center received a call at approximately 11.36 p.m. in reference to a carjacking on the Eastern Road, Christiansted. Uh, one, one victim made contact with 911 and stated that she was traveling with a friend on the Eastern Road when a vehicle started hitting them from behind, causing them to stop. They were separated by, uh, and her friend was taken to the individual's another, occasion, uh, another location. The victim was also later able to contact 911 and stated she was sexually assaulted. The victim was then transported to the Juana Flui Hospital for examination. This case is presently under investigation by the Criminal Investigation Bureau. Any persons having information regarding this incident, you are asked to contact the Criminal Investigations Bureau at 340-778-2211. You can also contact 911 or Crime Stoppers USVI at 1-800-222-TIPS. The Virgin Isles Police Department is reminding the motoring public while driving, if the vehicle behind you start hitting your vehicle, drive to a highly lit populated area and call 911 or travel to the closest police station. Try to get information on the type of vehicle and description of the driver. Police say on May 7th at approximately 9.55 p.m., officers responded to a call in reference to a gunshot victim being brought in by private vehicle at the Royal Lachishnada Regional Medical Center emergency room and requested the investigation bureau. Here's more. Upon officers' arrival, contact was made with a black male who appeared to have been shot and was bleeding from the right side of his head. According to the report, the incident took place in Content Knowles, and the victim of the shooting is a minor. Anyone having information about this crime or any other crime of the territory, call the VIPD, Criminal Investigations Bureau at 340-774-221 on St. Thomas, on St. Corey, 778-2211, Crime Stoppers VI at 1-800-222-TIPS or 911. 
In other news, on Friday, May 5th, at about 6.30 p.m., a complainant who is the owner of 1-800-SPORTS-BAR was interviewed and stated he was called to his business by his employees relative to a male with erratic behavior in a restricted area of his business. The approach, he, they approached the male who was later identified as Brian Steele, who was behind the bar and asked what he was doing there. He said Steele then hit a machete and handsaw to his neck. The complainant then drew his licensed firearm and ordered Steele to drop his weapons several times. Steele did not comply as he continued walking towards his direction, holding the machete in his hand. The complainant said he feared for his life and fired a single gunshot, striking Brian Steele, who was later taken into custody. The complainant sustained a laceration to his left forefinger, right side of his neck and declined medical treatment. This case is presently in, in, under investigation by the Criminal Investigation Bureau. Any persons have any information regarding this incident, you're asked to contact the Bureau at 340-774-2211, extension 5579 and 5557. They can also contact 911, Crime Stoppers VI, the Chief's Office at 340-715-5548 or the Commissioner's Office at 340-715-5546. The Department of Health reopened its doors to residents on the west end of St. Croix today. Michelle Davis, the Commissioner of Health, informed at the reopening ceremony that the department is working on accomplishing goals to provide more services to residents in the territory. Last month, the Health Department unveiled new ambulances for the territory, and today's reopening ceremony adds to the list of goals that the department is pushing. Stephanie Brown reports. The Virgin Islands Department of Health reopened its WIC clinic in Fredericksted Town earlier today. Michelle Davis, the commissioner of the Department of Health, listed today's reopening as an accomplishment for the department, along with further services becoming available on St. John. Uh, we reopened uh, limited services at Morris de Castro Clinic on St. John that was closed in 2012, and we're moving forward to um, open more. Commissioner Davis also informed that the department has received approvals to participate with NHSC's tax-free loan repayment programs. And this means that any clinicians can apply for the National Health Service Corps and have the opportunity to get their loans repaid uh, by signing up for this program and working with us or other partners in the territory. The Virgin Islands WIC director spoke about the importance of the supplemental nutrition program and expressed that she was happy to see that the office reopened. We left here in 2006. We did not intend to be away for this long. WIC was formally created in 1972 and was made a permanent program by 1975, and the Virgin Islands played a key role in its establishment. Say a little tidbit that individuals may not realize that Virgin Islands WIC is one of the oldest in the nation. As a matter of fact, St. Croix began the WIC services in 1976, two years before the, it was one of the pilot programs that uh, allowed them to see that it works. WIC program now has a home in the west end of St. Croix, providing easier access to eligible participants. For News 2, I'm Stephanie Shalana Brown. We'll turn our attention to Washington. One hurdle down, another to go with a narrow victory. The House passed legislation that would overhaul the Affordable Care Act. But now the concern is whether the bill will be dead on arrival once it reaches the Senate. Dan David Daniel reports. Here's more. That they want. Health and Human Services Secretary Dr. Tom Price made his rounds on the Sunday talk show circuit defending the new GOP-backed health care plan. It may not help the government, it may not help insurance companies, but it's a huge benefit to patients. The House handed the President a major win in Congress on Thursday with a narrow victory to start repealing and replacing Obamacare. The ayes are 217, the nays are 213. The bill is passed. The legislation may have cleared the House, but it is unlikely to receive a warm reception in its next stop, the Senate. The Senate will write its own bill. Whether the Senate starts from scratch with its own bill or works with the version approved in the House, one thing is clear. Republicans need at least 50 of their 52 senators on board if their legislation is to pass. Despite that, President Trump remains hopeful. We're going to get this passed through the Senate. I feel so confident. Some critics of the health care plan say its proposed cuts to Medicaid funding go against the president's own words on the campaign. Save Medicare 
Medicaid and Social Security without cuts. Have to do it. Price answered those criticisms, saying the current Medicaid program has problems, but that the new health care bill aims to fix them. What we're fashioning is a system that would, be, uh, would allow the states to tailor their Medicaid program to those specific individuals, thereby saving money, yes, but also making it so that they have a higher level of care, higher quality of care than they currently do. I'm David Daniel reporting. Keeping our eye on the economy, let's take a look at the stock market watch with the New York Stock Exchange. According to the numbers, we can see the Dow up 5, NASDAQ up 1, S&P 500 also up. Coming up on News 2, May is uh, Older Americans Month. Find out how many in the territory are, are recognizing the observance. That'll, that's up next. Welcome back. The governing and executive management team of the Virgin Islands Water and Power Authority reassured residents of the VI Sunday that the power plants will not run out of fuel and WAPA will continue to produce and provide electricity to its customers. They say while there is an existing contractual dispute between Vital and WAPA, an outstanding invoice for propane fuel delivered to the power plants over the past three months, they say they remain optimistic that we'll, they will reach an agreement on the issues at hand. WAPA's board chairperson Elizabeth Armstrong and CEO Julia Reimer Sr. said jointly on Sunday. Given the outstanding invoices for the LPG used to power the two island districts and the contract talks in pass, Vital made a decision to suspend the supply flow of LPG to the power plants at midnight last Thursday. Despite the suspension of fuel supply to WAPA's generation plants, Vital continues tra to transport fuel from its very large gas carrier anchored off the southwest coast of St. Thomas to the LPG terminals in Crumb Bay, St. Thomas and Estate, Richmond and St. Croix. Reimer explained that the switch back to oil was necessary in light of the suspension of LPG fuel supply. There was no interruption of services to WAPA customers and arrangements have been made for deliveries of oil to both power plants later this week. Count on two, we will have an update as well as a reaction from the PSC, Public Services Commission. Turning to some Caribbean news in Dominica, a customer service development, experts believe that key solution to tackling poor customer services is to first hire the right people. Here's more. In more news, a customer service development expert, Vere Murilo, believes a key solution to tackling poor customer service in the services sector is to first hire the right people. He has been developing customer service programs for over 25 years. Customer service is described as the assistance and advice provided by a company to those people who buy or use its products or services. The service sector is a leader sector of Dominica's gross domestic product, but the quality of customer service delivered affects the country's competitiveness. There are other issues you have to tackle before you deal with improving the customer service representative's function. And, 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 and I, I, I'll mention, for example, when some of the people, are, first of all, you have to select the right people. I honestly believe that you know you have to select people with the attitude and who really have the desire to serve and do well. If you don't do that, you're starting off on the wrong foot. He also believes building the esteem of customer service representatives can lead to good quality customer service. Morillo says customers demanding better from service providers is another means to improving customer service. The other part of the dynamic is that the customer's expectations, that is a key part in raising your customer service standards. So for example, you may have in Dominica an organization that does a survey and customers say that they are great. Now a customer care expert comes in and they say, but wait a minute now, these people are making all these flaws. But what really has happened is that people have rated the organization based on what they are used to, based on what they expect. 
We'll turn our attention back here at home. May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And just a reminder, the Department of Health is recognizing the awareness with many different workshops that everyone should take advantage of, including topics such as Into the Light, Substance Abuse, Treatment for Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, and Transgender Individuals, health and wellness, among others. There's also a workshop on May 9th from 10 to 12, stress management workshops at the Department of Education's Parent University at Juanita Gardine Elementary School. May 21st at 8.45 a.m., there's worship service at Memorial Moravian Church in St. Thomas. Various activities held for the residents at Eldra Schulterbrand Residential Facility and their families. Well, in other news, it's Older Americans Month. May is the recognition and a great reminder to recognize and celebrate the contributions and achievements of our elders. Senior Advisory Commission, Senior Centers, and other senior community organizations, they're hosting special activities during this month to honor their value. A special event was held at the Oswald Harris Court today. Now the 2017 theme is Age Out Loud. Here's more. My name is Amanda Bory, and my grandmother also takes a part with me to God be the glory ministry. And through her, I have learned to pray and keep on trusting in Jesus Christ. I'd like to wish my mother-in-law, Mary Mike, happy birthday, 100 years. It's such a blessing to have you in our life today from our family, Jan, Bory, and Yvette. I am so pleased to be here to join Miss Mary Mike and her family to celebrate her 100th anniversary of life and here we are in the centennial celebration of the Virgin Islands and we have among us people who have lived as long as we have been a US territory Miss Mike is an independent person I came in here she was dancing I, I couldn't believe she was a hundred um, it's it's really important for us to celebrate our seniors I sponsored legislation last year which became law uh, to celebrate our living centennials and so basically they get uh, $4,000 in life and one after and uh, it's not something that is innovative it's not something that I just came up with even though I hadn't known that it was being done anywhere else it is done other places and while it was criticized today it is law and you can see how many people turned out today to celebrate because we have to really really look at the importance of those seniors in our lives a hundred years is not an easy feat so I want to once again and join everyone in wishing Miss Mike a hundredth birthday. Happy anniversary, Miss Mike. And what a great honor. Congratulations to our centenarian. Well, officials of the Virgin Islands government and the Federal Highway Administration, they're reminding you they will be marking the resumption of work on the Turpentine Road, the Run Road project, with a groundbreaking ceremony that will be held in Estate Nada at 11 a.m. on Tuesday, May 9th. Now, residents of Estate Nada, surrounding community, and all media invited to be present for this very historic event. On the Big Island Friday night, Christianstead hosted its annual triathlon jump up. The festive atmosphere included live music in many locations. The streets were full of locals and tourists who had one thing in mind, have a great time. Several steel pan orchestras, they serenaded the crowd while uh, food and gift vendors shopped their wares. The fire dancers, they put on a hot show at the mill and of course, the Mocha Jumbies delighted the crowd with some dancing and many photo ops. Look like a fun time. Be sure to stick around. Your news to AccuWeather forecast comes your way next.
going on here across the area. We do have a front here, plenty of moisture. That is going to gradually be dropping into the area to bring an uptick and more numerous showers to the Virgin Islands for tomorrow and Wednesday as well. So you can see here across Hispaniola where there's been some showers in Puerto Rico. And again, uh, that moisture is going to continue to move southeastward. So we've seen a little bit of spotty activity popping up here across the area. And for tonight, we'll see a shower or two with a temperature of 75 degrees. And for tomorrow, that's when that front starts to come through. So we're going to see showers around in St. John's, 84 degrees. We'll also see some showers as we uh, head into uh, St. Thomas, more in the way of clouds in St. Thomas, a few showers, 84 degrees there as well. In St. Croix, we have some brief showers around and 85 degrees. On the Atlantic side, the waves are three to five feet. We have easterly winds at 10 to 15 knots and on the Caribbean side, three to five feet and we have easterly winds also at 10 to 15 knots. Now, as we look through the forecast period, the frontal boundary is going through for your Tuesday into Wednesday. So we have those showers coming through. That's when we're going to see um, more in the way of moisture in the area. By the time we get to Thursday, we're back into our more typical trade wind pattern. So we'll see a shower, brief shower around the area. Otherwise, we're just going to see some sunshine mixing with a few patterns clouds. On Friday, we'll see some sun, perhaps a brief trade wind shower around. And then on Saturday as well, there could be a shower in spots, a high temperature of 85 degrees with some sunshine mixing with a few passing clouds. Sandy? Thanks for that. Let's look at our new Sioux weather picture. It's by Kelis St. Hall of Ricardo Richards Elementary School sharing this uh, beautiful picture there with some sunshine and smooth sailing. We can say for the rest of the week, Kelis, tune in for News 2 and we'll tell you if there's any change in the weather. Send us your News 2 weather picture to the address on the screen and tune in to see it right here on News 2. Stick around, we have much more straight ahead. News 2 Sports comes your way next. I'm Gary Anthony and this is News 2 Sports. I am standing here at the Beast at the very last hairpin turn, 26% grade, where yesterday hundreds of triathletes came here to conquer the Beast in the 29th and very last St. Croix 70.3 Half Ironman Triathlon. It was a gorgeous morning as hundreds of triathletes made their final preparations for the last St. Croix 70.3 Half Ironman Triathlon. They came from everywhere, the states and locals, youngsters and the young at heart. At 6.30, the race began with the swim start from Hotel on the Key. The swimmers made good times, but due to rain, the slick conditions resulted in several bikers getting road rashes. The ride up the beast was, to say the least, beastly. We're having even more fun than the spectators and the volunteers. People are coming through fast and furious. This might be the last time we ever see bikers here again. Yes, sir. Catch that guy. All right. The only thing better than this was the Patriots winning the Super Bowl this year. Yes. Oh, man. Today was great. It's always a blast coming out here, hanging out with your friends, supporting the uh, racers. And everybody that comes out here does a fantastic job. We've been sweating six, since 6 in the morning, and we won't stop until it's done. Winners for the last triathlon were Frankie Farb of Martinique and Rebecca McKee from Alaska. However,